Happy Thursday. Thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to spend with me. As you might recall, on Thursdays, we take a look at our upcoming epistle reading for the weekend. And this weekend, we are in the Apostle Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. This is chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. One more time. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Here's the context. You'll see it this weekend in our readings for worship. Inside this section of Ephesians 3, the Apostle Paul is telling the Ephesian church that he is praying for their spiritual strength. And he talks about spiritual strength, both as knowledge of God, and more importantly, the love of God, known to them and then shown by them. But I found the verses that I shared with you kind of an interesting transition. Because Paul moves away from telling the Ephesian church about prayer, and suddenly he is bursting into prayer, or into prayer that's like praise. That's something Paul does sometimes. It's almost like as he talks about the greatness of God, that he can't help but have that teaching suddenly become worship. And when I read a text like this, it reminds me, and I wanted to remind you, of the content of Paul's prayer and praise. This is something you've likely heard a million times, something I try to work on myself and have maybe encouraged you to work on too. But I've noticed that in my prayer life that it's very easy to take up all the time that I spend in prayer before God with requests. To be clear, we absolutely should bring our our requests to God. But we shouldn't limit our life of prayer to requests. We can also use prayer time to do the kind of stuff that we see the Apostle Paul do here. Moves from requests to suddenly being in praise of God, in thankfulness to God. I also noted inside those verses, you probably did too, that Paul acknowledges that God He's capable of doing even more than we could ever think to ask. And reminders like that from the Bible are helpful to me. Because sometimes when I find myself at the end of my thoughts to come before God, the end of my words to come before God, I'm reminded of things that the Apostle Paul tells us. In Romans, he tells us that the Spirit is actually praying along with us and for us. And here, we're reminded that we bring prayers before God, we can actually trust that he's capable of doing way more than we would ever even consider to ask. So that's my encouragement for us today, that we would think about our lives of prayer, both to make use of time to pray to God and also make use of the time we spend in prayers to make requests, but also to do the kind of stuff that Paul does here, to come before God in praise and thankfulness. Here's our closing prayer. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. In the multitude of your tender mercies, prepare my heart that I may enter your house to worship and confess your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, my God and Lord. Amen. Hope you're having a great day. Look forward to seeing you soon.